Oh shit, who? Wait, who is that? Who is that? What? <laughs> what is your name? What is who that? are you? Who are you? Put that down. Who are you? Put it down. Put it down. Put it down and walk away. I'm asleep. I was asleep. I was asleep. I was asleep. I've been asleep before. Who is that? Who is it? Come in. What? Come in. Hey. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh. What's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back to the Two Honks Podcast, where it's better to have honked and lost than never to have honked at all. My name's Joe Little, towering above me in his ivory tower. This wonderful, very hot evening is Lamar. How are you today? Lamar. I am doing fantabulous. Yeah. How about uh, how about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. I think that was a really good intro. I feel pretty good about it. I think we did very well that time. It got a little trippy there for a second. Yeah. We asked some serious questions. I fell asleep and then I, I woke up and I was like, whoa, we're doing a show. Yeah, it's happening. It's happening I right prefer now. to do shows like that when I'm kind of like, I just wake up. Yeah. You know, because I don't have time to get anxious. Mm-hmm. I don't like to get anxious. Yeah. Do people like being anxious? Do you like being anxious? I think maybe they do. Some people like that. Isn't being anxious like a hallmark of modern life, kind of? Yeah, but people don't, don't most people don't like it, right? Or they, maybe they do. Maybe, I mean, they, I feel like they say they don't like it. They must like it if they're doing it, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're doing it all the time, then you like it. That's the way that everything works. If you're doing it, you must like it. You must enjoy being anxious. It's like, you know, I, I read an old story once, and it was an old man and he was walking, he's going to the doctor's office, and he was really bothered. He was upset about something. Yeah. He goes up to the doctor, and he says, hey, the doctor, it really hurts when I do this. And he puts his elbow up like that and swings his arm. Kind yeah. Of, you know, just dangles it right there. Right. And the doctor says, well, stop doing that. Right. And that was the end of the appointment. Well, it's that easy, huh? So what's, what was the point? What was the point of doing something that you didn't like and that hurt? Maybe just knock it off. Just stop doing it and you're fine. Stop it. Just stop. It's sh- sh- shut up. Shut up. Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it down and stop complaining about it. And yeah. just don't do it in the first place. Yeah, but anyway. Well, yeah. Uh, hey, we haven't talked about our armpit hair since we, we shaved off our armpit hair like... We did. 15 episodes ago. Has yours come back? It's not all the way back yet. You know, it's yeah. mostly back, but it's surprising how long that's taking. It's not as thick as before. How's how's mine looking? I don't, I, I don't remember what it looked like before, but... Yeah, it feels shorter. It feels thinner. So that whim decision to cut off our armpit hair, uh, I didn't take into account how long... That was like six months ago, I think. Uh, You know? Was it six months ago? It was like five or six, I think. Did we record that back in February? It was our Long Hair Society talking about the yeah. uh, the hairy guy, uh, well, the Bigfoot. Time flies. We've done a lot of these. Yeah, don't cut off your armpit hair if you don't, if you wanted to grow back. And yeah, if you wanted to happen. grow back and you really like your armpit hair, don't cut it off. Just don't. Just don't. You know. So, a month ago, we had a hot, a heat dome, heat. Uh, that descended weather. on us heated heated weather heated weedies hot fire coming out of the sky we have another one of those now and it's supposed to be stupid again yeah and i'm like i'm okay with it 
it's going to be like 105 degrees outside again. I was mad the first time, but now I'm like, you know what? I got my AC. I'm good. Yeah. You know? Post up. Yeah, exactly. Plus, well, I got, I got um, my work is shutting down for three days, so I have like a six-day weekend now. So you get some extra time off. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like perfectly in time with my where my weekend would have ended. So I'm like actually kind of pleased about it. Nice. So I'm like happy that the world's ending. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pleased. Do you think that's what's actually happening? The world's ending? I think it's like, you know, I think it will. Um, but I think this is like the beginning of it. Yeah. And I'm like okay with it because I don't have to work. Yeah. So. And when you don't have to work. I'm happier when I'm not working. Yeah. So, I mean, if the end of the world means that we all get to not work anymore, maybe it'll, it'll be fun. Maybe it'll be a good thing. Yeah, I mean, never, nobody ever talks about the end of the world as, like, a good thing. Maybe this is a good thing to go off on here for a second because... We can take a break and just live. Maybe the end of the world is just the end of the world as you know it. The end of the working world. It. Yeah. It's like the end of the work week. Yeah. It's like, it's just, you, you've been in the middle of one long ass work week yeah. for your entire life. And you just, you just didn't even realize it. Right. You were like, oh, you know, I'm going to go do something fun with my family. But little did you know, you actually weren't doing anything fun because you were in the middle yeah, cause you're, of what feels like an eternal work week. It's like, oh, it's Friday. I'm going to go. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to go out with my friends and have a drink. And then uh, it's Saturday and I'm going to go party. And then like, oh, but it's almost yeah. time to go back to work again. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's almost Monday again. Yeah. Nobody wants that. I guess I'll go to work. It's Monday. Ugh. Who decided this? Yeah. This is like, maybe. Like, what a stupid idea. What the fuck is going on? Somebody want to explain what is going on here? Can someone please explain to me what the fuck is going on? You know what I don't like about the heat? The thing that upsets me about the heat is that it's sunny outside. Right. And it's something that I should all, for all intents and purposes, I should be able to enjoy it. I like it. But I can't because it's so effing hot. You know what you need to do is you, you got to get a pair of these uh, blue blockers. The blue blockers. Because that's going to take the sun yeah. equation out. We hit we hit them up for a sponsorship. They haven't gotten back to us yeah, yet. Yeah, but right? they're I mean they're good shades. Blue blockers. They're pretty decent. Yeah. Well, you know, and I mean, if you're working for blue blockers and you're listening to this podcast right now, go ahead and shoot us, shoot us a sponsorship. Give us some money. Well, just send us a case of the sunglasses. And yeah. Stop, like, fooling around. Yeah. We're not joking. Like, just send us free stuff. Yeah. Send us free stuff. Yeah. If it doesn't and actually be okay. Honestly, it doesn't matter if you work for Blue Blocker or wh- whoever you work for. Yeah. Send us whatever you make and yeah. just give it to us. Yeah. Because we want free stuff. Yeah. If you make like flower pots. Right. Send us a bunch of flower pots. Yeah. I don't care. I just like free stuff. If you make like money, send us that. Yeah. You know, if that's what you do. Yeah. I mean, if anybody's listening to this podcast and they work at the fucking money factory. Yeah. We'll take some. Send us some of that. We like that. We'll take two cases of money. A cup. <laughs> <laughs> two cases of money just send it down me and my boys are trying to party tonight we would really like two cases of money please please and thank, thank you. you yeah thank you thanks in advance for that yeah um i saw uh one of the most interesting sites i've seen now we're, we're downtown here just so everybody knows okay in the studio apartment is is that really where we are we are uh in the well happen in alphabet district that's what they call it oh yeah so, I've seen a lot of naked people mm-hmm. out here um, downtown, mm-hmm. and that's normal in Portland. You see, you see naked people. You're, it's, you're allowed to be nude mm-hmm. in Portland. Um, I saw something kind of interesting for the first time yesterday. I came back from picking up some cat food for my cat, and I was parking, and I saw a nude, middle-aged... A uh, mesomorphic, body-shaped woman. Yeah. Totally nude, right there, like on the sidewalk, right in front of these fancy apartments. Okay. And she was uh, four fingers deep masturbating um, with, like, moaning and everything. And I was like, is this really happening? Oh, my Lord. And I kind of, like, cut across at a diagonal so I could kind of, like, 
yeah. make sure I was seeing what I was seeing. And it was, she was not concerned at all that it was like out in public. She had her phone like down at a low angle. I don't know if she's like broadcasting or what was going on, but I was just like, whoa, my, am I, one of my neighbors was out smoking and I was like, dude, do you see this over here? <laughs> Oh my god! He was like, "Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that's what she was doing." But I've seen other nude women over here. I'm like, <laughs> what is? Can somebody explain to me what the fuck is going what on? What the fuck is going on? I couldn't believe it. It was like, I mean, that's why I love this neighborhood too. It's like, yeah, it's like I'm in a festival all the time. That is so strange. And she wasn't like, I mean, she probably was high, but she seemed pretty well together. Yeah. Other than like. She seemed like... Uh, she didn't seem like crazy. Like she didn't sleep in a tent on the street last night. She was probably... Ho- we we talked about terms. You can't say houseless anymore. Yeah. We can't say transient. We talked about vagabonds. It's a different thing if you hop in trains. Yeah. I came up with the term home free. Home free. Which that I like. sounds really nice. I like that because maybe yeah. she's home free. You think she's home free? I mean, she looked like she was home free when I yeah. saw her because she was really... She was knocking them out of the park. And she had her phone at a low angle. She was either broadcasting something or viewing something that yeah. helped her get into the mood. But she was going in there for seconds. You know what I mean? She was she was digging around. It was pretty... I was astounded. <laughs> I've never seen that in person. This was not in our pre-podcast discussion, I, Yeah, I wanted to save this I one. did not know that this was going to happen. <laughs> well... I was so surprised. If we've offended anybody, I'm sorry. I, this is just what happens in my life. So <laughs> I'm sorry. This is what I witnessed. That's so insane, though. How the... What? Yeah. What inspires someone to do that? I don't know. So did the cops get called? Did any authorities think, show up or I anything? I don't think anybody calls the cops for that kind of behavior. Yeah. But if it, maybe if it was a guy, Yeah. I feel like that would have been... Maybe it would have been more inappropriate somehow. Yeah. Right? I mean... Well, because guys are creepy. Like, let's just be honest. It would be creepy if you were just, yeah, just stroking it, but... Yeah. But, I mean, she was getting in there. It wasn't, like... It wasn't tame or anything. She was going for it. Oh, my God. It was pretty graphic. I was like, wow, this is really happening right here. Like, you kind of felt bad for her on a certain level? That's what he said. My neighbor said, and I, I was like... I was like, I don't think... I think she's having a good... I think she's right where she wants to be. Yeah. Like, right on the edge. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he was like, good for her. I was like, yeah, well, that's what happens in the neighborhood. I mean. And I, I do think you good for her. And then, honestly, it was like 1 p.m. when I saw this. I put the food away. I went downstairs to go out to the grocery store, and I looked around. Mm-hmm. She was not there anymore. Yeah. And I saw her just a half block up with all of her clothes on again, just walking away like nothing happened. She just had to get it out. Sometimes you just got to stop and get it out real quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think she just had like nowhere else to go. That might be true, yeah. You know, you know, like how like could be the case. I think it was like 2014, 2015. Actually, you know, probably started in 2008, really. But um, the idea that stripping can be like an empowering thing for a woman, right? Like, when people first started talking about that, everybody was like, what? Oh, my God. No, it's so degrading. Right, right. So maybe, and and over time, you know, now it's 2021, it seems to be more generally accepted. I feel, I feel yeah. like most men and women understand that, oh, yeah, no, a stripping for a woman is like, it can it can be a, a, empowering to some women because it's like, right. I'm, I'm using these things that I already have to just take all of your money. Right, and you and you won't stop giving it to me. You can't know? stop, yeah. So I, I think everybody generally understands and accepts that it can be an an, an empowering act. Yeah, I think that's but, like I mean it, it, the liberation of sex work. Yeah, is, is like a pretty big thing now, especially in like uh, I don't know more like liberal cities. Yeah, but you also see more tattoos, like tattooed people, and tattooed people are yeah. In a similar way, we're judged for being, like, dirty or, like, like you know, like... Uh, well, I mean, the, all those things kind of became worldwide things slowly, you know? Now it's, like... You didn't of, get, like, turn. You don't get really turned down for jobs anymore just for having tattoos, you right. know? Like, that's not... I feel like you might not get hired if you don't have tattoos at, yeah. at like, most, like, restaurants and bars in Portland. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah. the only one that doesn't have a tattoo at my restaurant. Yeah. 
That's that's crazy. Yeah. But like here, but that's the thing, you know, maybe is that the direction that we're going though? Like we're uh, to the point that in like 20 years from now, some woman can just stand on the corner and like finger blast herself and everybody's just like, oh yeah, no, that's empowering. Yeah. It just People just do that. It's super empowering. I think it would be kind of cool to have that because I think in other countries. Yeah. That is the case. Like, you were listening to Arnold Schwarzenegger well, I mean, talk a, about... Like, I feel like it's the case in Europe to have yeah. more nude beaches and stuff like that. Right. But people just, like, masturbating in front of massive groups right. of people, that's not... I don't feel like that. It, that's really common in any place in the I world. I don't think that's become that common yet, except for on my block. Yeah. But, I don't know. I think it would be kind of cool if we could... Uh, loosen the taboo a little bit maybe maybe not i don't know if that's ever going to happen where that's like totally normal yeah but i do remember arnold schwarzenegger talking about the locker rooms in austria and like the 80s or whatever and he he said some things that were pretty sounded pretty wild to me at the time yeah i can't remember exactly what it was but it was like not a big deal to, for people to like just have sex in the in the locker rooms yeah it's like oh it's just like anything else it's like taking a, a shit or yeah. Whatever. It's like it's a human function and you just have to do it sometimes. Yeah. And that's kind of maybe European style too, where it's just like, why is there all this shame attached to it? And that really yeah. just comes from our like religious, puritanical, probably upbringings. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I'm afraid. I'm, I'm ashamed of my body and like anything my body does. Totally. Well, yeah. No. And I, I can definitely agree with that. Like when, when you feel, when people are taught to be connected to their body, they're going to be you know, just inherently more free with it. Right. Because they're comfortable with it. They've meditated on their body quite a bit, you know. Or they haven't built up, like, bullshit it, it, stuff yeah, in yeah. their heads. Built up or shame like, or anything like that <coughs> from was, any other kind of, like, yeah. I was listening to this, like, this clip of Russell Brand's podcast. <coughs> is that his name? I don't know. If that's, is that his name? Yeah, the, the British guy that's, yeah. like, really fucking annoying. Yeah, he was, like, okay. he was yeah, talking to somebody... <laughs> <laughs> super annoying guy um he was talking with somebody about um trauma and it was kind of like a snippet of something that he charges money to listen to yeah because he's an idiot and an asshole yeah because um, you fucking hate him so he's stupid he's and annoying dumb. but the guy was saying don't like, like him i hate him i don't I listen just, to his podcast but i hate him i don't just not i, I just I hate him yeah but anyway go on but his guest who i didn't hate as much okay said um that you know like if you look at kids when they're like like babies uh, if they like hurt themselves they fall over they cry like instantly yeah and he was talking about this as like an energy that moves through you like it's like that's a trauma when you fall and you hurt yourself you have this like this energy has to go somewhere and for for kids it's like natural to just cry or yeah. like scream or whatever but as we get older we learn to like block those things and like say like that's not appropriate to do or that's like I'm gonna people are gonna judge me for being weak yeah, if I yeah. do that. So we block that and you that, build you build like layers. It's like it's like yes, I'm yeah. in pain right now, but I can't. You muffle it and you it like yeah. stops the energy. I can't just like, overreact and throw a tantrum. Yeah, it's like a teapot boiling and you like put a cork in it. I mean, where is that energy supposed to go? Yeah. So it's like it's kind of interesting to think of it that way. Like we and and we've done that through our, our cultured civilizations. We've just like yeah. put all these ego stops and blocks in our bodies now so like there's like i think people just need better hobbies yeah take all that emotion and start collecting trains or something something i don't know trains yeah don't tell me about your problems yeah i mean you could collect trains but you could also like knit like a guitar yeah you could knit a guitar yeah, yeah. i've done i've done it yeah yeah so <sighs> one time i asked my grandma to knit a guitar for me she said i can't she really? Said she couldn't do it. I thought, see, my grandma showed me how to knit them. She knitted a car for me one time, too. She did a car for you? Yeah. Was that your first car? She knitted me a, a, a set of them, a set of cars. A set of cars. Yeah. Okay. It was like a 12, I think. Or well, it was a baker's dozen. Oh, okay. Baker's dozen of cars. That's good. That's good. I like yeah. that. I like that. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I mean, okay. yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, but moral of the story, be free with your body. It's great. Yeah. Your body is wonderful. If you, Especially if you're listening to this podcast. Yeah. Be proud of your body. 
yeah. any shape or size. And if you're just not, just be happy with it. If you're not in a sex positive city like Portland, where yeah. you can just go on the streets and masturbate, yeah, maybe just do it anyways in your city. Yeah, and exactly. tell them that you want to do it because you're in touch with your body. You know, I mean, everybody's into normalizing everything. Let's just let's just go ahead and normalize masturbating in the street. Okay, it's not weird. It's not weird. Everybody yeah. does it. it. Happens every day. It's a human function. So there you go. Yeah, stop judging me. There you go. But anyway, okay, so there is one thing I uh, wanted to mention. Okay. Um, this is our 27th episode or is something that right? like that. Something like that, yeah. Every every single episode has been at least, you know, 45 minutes long or something like that. And it, it made me realize something. Yeah. It made me realize that across all episodes of the Two Honks podcast. Right. You could listen to us, and we wouldn't repeat ourselves for an entire day. 24 hours. 24 hours. Of content. You would be able to listen to Two Honks Podcast for 24 hours straight at this point. So I want to present to you, the listener, a little bit of a challenge. Okay. I would like for you to start early in the morning one morning, say about 8 a.m., with the very first episode of the Two Honks Podcast... And just let that shit play all day. Let it ride. Until 8 in the morning the very next day. And then after that, well, during what I would like is to see you, you know, post things on Instagram, you know. Scrupulously take notes. Scrupulously take notes. Talk about, we want to, we're really, with this project, we're really just trying to get a focus on how great we are yeah why are we so awesome why are we so great and so awesome right and we want you to tell us why we're so great because we haven't figured it out yet yeah so we want you to listen to the top two hunks podcast for an entire day at the end of it write us a review tell us how great we are don't criticize us we don't want to hear it if it's negative no we're trying to be positive people we don't want to hear your negativity you can yeah. take that somewhere else yeah well, and, and a lot of people out there are like, hey, you know, constructive criticism yields positive results. And we're like, no, no, no. Did, it did anybody ever tell Dwayne The Rock Johnson that he sucked? Yeah. No, because he's awesome and right. he's super rad. Yeah. And Mozart, you know, Beethoven. Yeah. Do you no, think people were like, oh, could you play your piano somewhere else? Yeah. Do you think anybody was ever like, hey, Beethoven, you suck? No. Yeah, why don't you take your piano in the other room? No, nobody ever does that to people that are great, and we're really great, so don't criticize us. We're shooting for something bigger than we're it's shooting for something. We are? Yeah, just post it on the internet, tell us how great we are, tag us in it. Right. And and then we'll share it on our Instagram and we'll get more followers because of it because we're so yeah. great. And we can tell everybody about it. So that's what I want you guys to do. Uh, if you collect videos and give us a review, you can either shoot it to me at two honks podcast at gmail.com or you can leave us a review on, uh, what is it, iTunes? Yeah, and some reviews would be nice. I mean, yeah. come on, guys. Come on. We got a couple, though. You know, I mean, we got over 24 hours of content here, guys. You got to find something that you like. It's like you're in a cave with, like, crystal gems everywhere you look. Yeah. That's kind of how it feels to me. And you think you think, you think think we would have talked about everything by this point. Right. We wouldn't even be able to. But then just something new happens. And there's plenty yeah. of things to talk about. Our lives are filled with uh, wonder. Yeah. Wonder and joy and Naked women. Basically, um, yeah. 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 That's pretty much how we live our lives. Just tell us how great we are. That's all we want. I can wait until they post that. I am able to wait for that. I can wait until they send us the review. Yeah. Because I have no other choice because that's how time works. Exactly. Exactly. I don't know why people say can't when they can and they have to. And that's the other thing we wanted to talk about today. Yeah. I can't wait. It's like you're basically telling me I'm excited about this thing that's about to happen. Right. There's a show coming up and I'm excited. So my question is, why why not just say that? I can't wait. I can't wait. Well, you kind of have to. So, yeah. Do like, it. Like you're so cool that you can't just say, like, I'm excited for this concert that's happening next week. It's like, yeah. I can't wait for the Radiohead concert. Well, 
actually, of course you fucking can because it happens in three weeks. If you could not wait, yeah. then you would you would be there before the band even showed up. If you could not wait, you would like cease to exist. Think about that for a minute. If you couldn't wait for the show and you went to the show before they even got into the country, yeah. how fun of a show is that going to be when the band's not even there, you egghead? Yeah, exactly, you idiot. <sighs> like, get over yourself, man. You have to wait. You have no choice. It might be more fun if the band is actually there playing yeah. a show. I mean, it, you know, can't, I mean, when are people going to get this? When are people going to understand? I, you? Yeah. No, you can wait. You can and will. You don't I'm, have a choice. Yeah. It's basically that's like, that's it. That's the way that it is. So just because time's not real doesn't mean you can't wait. Yeah. That's something that people don't get. Just because time is not real is a construct. Doesn't mean you can just jump out ahead in the future you, you all willy just, nilly. You can't just bypass time. We haven't figured yeah. that out yet. It's we're, it's we're <laughs> we're not living in Back to the Future here. My, <laughs> you can't just jump on your uh, time machine all willy all cattywampus and put your talk to Doc or slap my face and call me McFly. You know, surf on your board or whatever. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can't bypass time yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can wait. I can think about it. I can think about bypassing time. I can think about how to do it. I can think about not waiting. But in the meantime, you you can wait. While you're thinking, you're waiting, actually. Yeah. So. While you're thinking I can't wait, you're you're waiting. While, so, you're, while you're saying you can't wait, so, you're waiting. So stop. I mean, basically just stop saying stupid shit. I ba- I mean. It would be nice if people could just be honest. Can someone explain to me what you the know? fuck is going on? You know, come on. I saw this article. Um, uh, th- it's about a critical ocean system that might collapse in, okay. the, in the near future. Um, it's called the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation System. Yeah. And uh, it transports warm, salty water from the tropics to northern Europe and sends colder water back along the ocean floor, kind of like a conveyor belt. Yeah. Um, and apparently there's signs that it's slowing down, and uh, if it stops some really bad stuff's going to happen with uh, temperatures rising and stuff in other in Europe or whatever and on the coast. Uh, sounds really bad. And I think it's, yeah, it sounds like it's like going to ruin a lot of stuff. Really? There's yeah. Just massive heat waves, huh? Doesn't that sound stupid? That really sucks. Yeah. Huh. Uh, anyway. But anyway, I mean, uh, so I was uh, getting some stuff out of my car today. Yeah. And uh, I heard a car alarm down the road oh yeah i love that and um the 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 driver of the car just got in turned off the alarm and kept on driving but it it made me it was you know obviously very uneventful but it made me think something has a car alarm ever made a difference for someone has a car alarm ever prevented a theft ever prevented a car theft yeah burgle or burgling yeah a car burglar Car burgling? Is that what they say? Like bur- gargling? Burgling? A burgling. Burgling? Have you ever... A car burgling? Has it ever stopped a burgling from happening? Have it? Has it ever stopped a car burgling? I hear them all the time in my neighborhood. Yeah. And I, the first thing I think is, why do they make these alarms when they don't do anything except annoy? It's like a... Yeah. It's like a, a, a leaf well, blower. It's like just an annoying sound. Well, do you ever hear like a window break before the uh, the alarm goes off or anything like that? No, I've never. The window breaks are yeah, they're pretty professional out here. They happen, nobody hears them. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. They're pros. Okay, but like, I mean, nine times out of ten, you hear a car alarm go off. It's just the owner of the car that accidentally hit a button on their keys, or they open their door too soon, and the car alarm goes off. Right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like I don't even turn my head anymore. Yeah, it's it's like. If I heard that sound and I could see somebody actually trying to steal a car, I would just be like, hurry up and get it out of here. I don't want to hear that anymore. Yeah, exactly. Like, just don't take it. Don't bring it back here. I don't care if you stole it. Just don't put it by my window. Like, can you steal it faster? Yeah. Because I'm getting tired of it. No, I mean, I could. Yeah. You know, I, I would do the same thing. If I saw somebody stealing a car, I would just say, you know, yeah, that's great. Just jump in and get it. Get it moving. Maybe go out and help them. Get get it out of there. Yeah, I mean, you don't know how to how to hotwire a 1988 Toyota Rav Four. Well, let me show you, buddy. I just watched a YouTube video. Here yeah, we go. I remember my first time. Yeah, I remember my first time. You 
fucking amateur, man. <laughs> God. Maybe that's all it is. Just people need to like get better. Everybody's out here trying to steal a Tesla. Don't try to steal a Tesla. Find a car that was made in the 80s, you fucking idiot. Come on. You can't steal Teslas. You can't do it. It's not possible. Jeez. Moron. And you can't steal those iPads off the thing either. They're mounted onto the dashboard. Yeah. So stop trying it's to not. take the iPad off the dashboard of my oh, Tesla. Look, there's a free iPad in that car. I'll just break in and steal it. It's yeah, exactly. mounted to the dashboard. It's stuck there, idiot. And it's not an iPad. Shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> have, you, have you discovered this recently that people just more and more just need to shut the <laughs> fuck up? Have you noticed this? I have, yeah, recently. Have you looked at this? Have you read about it in the news lately? I heard a podcast about it. It's like, hey, 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 Tucker, Tucker Carlson, shut up. Right. Shut the fuck up. Uh, I've got something to say. Hey, shut up. I know something you don't know. Yeah. Hi, hey guys. <laughs> even over even over the weekend, my, my nephew was saying something. I was just like, shut up. Right. Just shut up. It's like, hey Joe, shut the how do you want your hamburger? Up. Shut up. Yeah. Don't talk to me. <laughs> don't talk to me like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Clifford. I love you. <laughs> 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 I couldn't let anybody think that I hated them. <laughs> I was uh I was watching your dogs. You and Sarah's dogs. That's right. That's and, uh, right. You had a story about that. Well, I was a little bit worried, uh, Maverick was acting a little bit funny. He's the one of the bigger. He's got, is, is it like a Doberman uh, or a yeah? What do you he, call it? Uh, he, well, his papers say he's a, a German Shepherd Rottweiler mix. Rottweiler, yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. He's a, he's a big dog. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he was acting a little funny, and I was a little bit concerned that he might have had uh, irritable jowl syndrome. <clears throat> so something with his, shaking his head with his jowls were flopping around. Yeah. But then I thought maybe he's got restless jowl syndrome. You know, maybe it's the restless, restless jowl. Restless jowl syndrome. You know, wouldn't my brother had irritable jowl syndrome? And, wouldn't uh, restless and, and irritable be kind of the same thing? They're similar, but I think they're a different diagnosis. Oh, okay. I think they're treated slightly differently. So but, is uh, irritable jowls like, is that more of like an internal thing that recreates more jowl, uh, jowl discharge? I think it's an inflammation in the jowl uh, tissue. Oh, okay. Yeah, inside the jowl. Yeah. Uh, whereas the restless jowl syndrome is more of like a fluttering. Your fl- a fluttering of the jowl. The jowl is a flutter. The jowls don't stop a f- the flutter. The jowls a flutter. The the jowls are a flutter. Right. My my jowls are a flutter. Then you probably have irritable jowl. Yeah. And if you're listening to this episode and your jowls are a flutter. Go ahead and shoot us a message to honkspodcast at gmail.com. Tell us how your jowls have been fluttering. People don't talk about their jowls enough. People don't talk. Yeah, know? exactly. This is this is really what we're trying to do here. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to. It's important. We're, tar- we're trying to talk about things that might be a little bit uncomfortable. Okay? These things are something that are important I mean, if you're suffering with you. irritable jowl syndrome, there's no reason for you to suffer in silence. You don't have to just be like, oh, my jowls are funny. Yeah. Oh. It's like, oh, gosh, I wish I brought my other jowls with me. It's like, yeah. well, it's okay. Be proud of the jowls that you have, Everybody's okay? jowls. You don't have to be because, ashamed of your jowls. Yeah. <laughs> There's some people that didn't even get to be born and never, yeah. they never even got to experience having jowls in the first place. If there's a movement in your jowls, yeah. and you're concerned that the movement might be... There's, there's people in this world that would problem. be... They, they would be happy as hell to have their jowls all aflutter. Right. If they're a flutter, maybe yeah. you have uh, restless jowl syndrome. Yeah. And that's okay. That's okay. You're it's fine. fine. It's fine. You're fine. You're fine. Your jowls can flutter. It's fine. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Was there... Lamar? Yeah. How are you? I'm okay. I mean, t- what are you? Oh. um. Today... I'm like a butterfly on a flower. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Like a daffodil. Um, it, why are you that? Why are you? Yeah. Why are you? Did I tell you the story about that woman that asked me that? Yeah. I was at a bar by myself like well, a few years ago and some like 
middle-aged, probably like 45-year-old woman. Yeah. Who I think was hitting on me. But maybe it's just because I was like lonely or whatever. Yeah. She looked over to me and she was like, she was like, I'm not going to ask how you are. Yeah. I'm going to ask why you are. And she looked kind of pissed. Wow. And I was just like, whoa. Really? Yeah. I never saw that as a question that would be asked with any form of aggression. Why are you? Why are you? (laughs) I thought it was... It like kind of like in Zen, there's like a thing where your mind just like turns in on itself. Yeah. I had like a split in my brain when that happened and I was just like, what happened? And she walked away and I was just like staring at the bar like, what? Yeah. Just happened. Well, and it, it, it raises something interesting too, because when it has, has, I don't know. I guess when certain people ask me how I am, I generally feel, I genuinely feel like they care. Right. About how I actually am. But then, like, uh, a coworker will say it to me in passing. He's right. like, oh, hey, how are you? And I, like, I always want to just be like, you don't care. Right. Like, yeah, I, know, I know that you don't care. And it's okay for you to not ask me that question. You don't have to say that. You don't have to say that yeah. because I know that you don't care how I am. But... If someone that was a perfect stranger was to approach me and say, why am I? Right. That's a very interesting question. So if somebody's even going to ask you why you are the way you are. Right. There's, I feel like there's much more genuine uh, meaning behind that. Like they, it does seem like they they actually care, you know? Yeah. The fact that she was aggressive about it. Yeah. Kind of, maybe that's what threw me off. So she cared. She whether, cared, but she was pissed. Too. Yeah, wh- whether she, whether you were doing something that was pissing her off or not, right? Or if she was trying to hit on you, in either of those scenarios, she cared about you in some way, right? You know, I, I got yeah. I don't, I don't know. I still, I still wonder about that. I think, I feel like she was asking me like, uh, like a philosophical question that wasn't really about me. Yeah. But maybe that's just because I was already kind of in a in a state like that. Perhaps you felt some kind of aggression towards a guy that like looked like you, right? You know, I mean, yeah, I don't like, remember how I looked at the time, but I probably look kind of a bit of a hippie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I kind of look like a little bit of a hippie. Yeah, because you don't look like that at all right now. Yeah, I'm pretty normal now. Yeah, he's really normal guy. I look guy. like a normal businessman. Yeah, right normal. Now. He's wearing a suit right now. You I can't always, see it. You can't see it. But, I always you know. wear a tuxedo when we do this. Yeah, exactly. Okay. We're always looking good. We did forget to do our weigh-in this time, though. Right. I've been pretty stable, so. Pretty, but, yeah. Pretty right on. Yeah, man. Definitely. Well, anyway, eh, was there anything else you needed to bring up this evening? Uh, well, I did have this idea about sarcasm. Uh. Yes, Okay. Okay, this is the big one, folks. Strap yeah. in. Go go ahead, Lamar. Yeah, and this might be a too big of a topic for this, and I don't even really even know where it's going or what it is. Mm-hmm. But uh, I had this this feeling occurred to me where I was just like, the world seems sarcastic, mm-hmm. right? That's like, I mean, our podcast is sarcastic. Yeah. Um, we're capitalizing on that state of the world. Yeah. But also like. I feel like I remember being a kid and seeing, almost seeing the world change and become more sarcastic. Like I remember, like the the first thing I thought of, like the first experience I had where I was like, this was a sarcastic world was the game Sorry, yeah. which we had growing up. Because you're not sorry. It's like, like sorry, sorry, you know, like sorry I bumped your piece off. Or like growing up, people were like, oh, I really like your shirt not yeah you know that's like yeah because to to be like humble and open and kind to somebody is lame and weak yeah right so i'm like i'm trying to wonder trying to figure out like is that actually something that's happening or is it just something that's happening in my life i think it's happening in most places you know i feel like in certain communities if you get yourself in a, a a circle 
of people and you see nothing but those people, it could be very possible to, you know, kind of switch the paradigm and see things in a different way. Right. But, like, you know, for me, I talk to probably like 50 to 70 different people a day. Yeah. And most of them tend to be kind of sarcastic or just really? like jerks, you know, they kind of know it alls, you know. Right. Everybody has kind of a front, a little bit of a force in front of them. Or like if you if you're a know-it-all, you also feel like you you have an opinion. Yeah. Right? Going into it. Well, and that's the opposite of being humble and open. Yeah. Right? And that's a, that's a big downfall too, is you know, you, you have to be you, you have to have an opinion. Right. Because if you don't have an opinion, then you definitely have the opinion of the person that I don't agree with. So, you know. Right. If like, you, well, if you don't have an opinion, you're a stupid idiot. Yeah, first you're a stupid all. fucking moron. Oh, you don't have an opinion because you're not yeah. paying attention, idiot. Yeah, it's because you're not paying attention, idiot, because you don't have an opinion because you're a moron and I hate you. You suck. Yeah. Like... I- I feel like yeah. that's maybe that's more what it is. Yeah, probably. You it's know, like I think everybody feels like they have to have an opinion. Now well, and, and on a certain level, they do, because if you don't say something, you're not doing enough. And if you have the wrong opinion, then you're just doing too much of the wrong thing. So everybody's kind of on on guard now. Maybe you know? that's it. Yeah, sarcasm's kind of a a filter for that a little bit. You know, right? You know, it's a, it's it a, seems... if you're sarcastic all the time. Like maybe, maybe there's a guy out there, like some like hipster guy that actually really does like Donald Trump, but he just wears Donald Trump t-shirts like ironically all the time. Right. Yeah. You know, he's like, "Oh no, it's just what I do at parties or whatever." <laughs> Look it's at funny. me, I'm funny. Yeah, but then he goes home and he's like, "I actually really like that guy. He's like a really smart or whatever." Yeah, I'm you know. What I to say. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, maybe. Can you get away with things just by doing it ironically? I think you could. It's like, oh, yeah, I murdered your cousin, but I did it ironically. So yeah, so it's, it's fine. Fine. You're fine. Uh, yeah. You'll get over it. You're fine. Right. Yeah. It do, it seems to me like a like a guarded way of living where you like, you, like heart, you're protecting your heart or like closing your heart up. Yeah. So that it can't get hurt. And maybe maybe it's because we live in a world where everybody's been abused in some way or another. Yeah, like we're all like targeted by media and like we have to be guarded or else we would be poor. Like yeah. they would just take all of our money like like the uh the Nigerian scam or whatever. It's like if we all weren't guarded, we would just assume we won all this money yeah. and somebody's trying to send it to so, us from Nigeria. Do you think we've lost a certain amount of innocence as a society because of like just like the internet? I think I think we've learned how awful people can be. Yeah, for sure. Because, like, I mean, yeah, we're all like human nature is a spectrum. Yeah, and we do gravitate towards the negative stuff because it's interesting. Yeah, right? exactly. But yeah, I think I think the internet has helped us. Like pain, see that pain is a more real emotion than like uh, like happiness in a lot of cases. You know, pain's the only thing that's real. Yeah, pain. Well, no, we, we've already talked about that. We dispelled that. We dispelled that. That's not true. Because definitely happiness is real. Right. Pain is not the only real thing, guys. It's, yeah. It's just, I mean, it I mean, it might feel the most real. Right. It might be the thing you most relate with at a certain point in your life because you're going through something difficult. Because that's all you feel is pain. Because that's all you feel. That could be true. But yeah. if that's all you want to feel, then that's all you're going to feel. Yeah. Okay. Right. There's actually more. I just want you to know that. There is more things to you could feel instead of that. Yeah. Also. But you I'll, do have to open your heart hey, up, right? You know what? You know what? Next time you're sad, how about you just try and like feel something else? Okay. Right. Like, get out of my face. Stop feeling like that. Okay. Yeah. I don't stop it. Knock it off. Knock it off. Yeah. Don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I feel like the the like quintessential image of i mean the, the word hipster doesn't really mean anything anymore but it i feel like it used to mean like smoking a cigarette and like wearing a cool band shirt and just being like knowing all the cool stuff yeah and i feel like that's even an extension of this this like sarcastic yeah direction that that uh 
humanity's taken because it's like, well, this person know is already cooler than I could be ever be. And those people like looked cool, but the thing is those people tend to be the most guarded, you know? They're like precariously. Yeah, if, like if I keep this like face on, you know, it's uh nobody ever has to dig any deeper than that. Right. If I look cool on the exterior, then nobody actually has to know what's going on in here. Right. And then nobody's going to ask me why I am. Yeah. Nobody's going to ask me why I am. Right. I've heard if you ask a hip, hipster why they are, they'll just explode. Right. Right there in front of you. Just a poof of this smoke. Blow up. Try it out. Yeah. I hear there's confetti inside. So. Really? I heard there's candy yeah. in there. Yeah. I hope nobody ever does it to me because I might, I might just blow up. I don't know. I don't know if I would blow up. What if it's tasty chips, like something, a delicious Oof. snack? I really hope it's like sour cream and onion. Yeah. I really hope it's a just a whole bunch of sour cream and on, onion chips when well, they explode. Well, it's probably definitely going to be a loaded uh, chips. What do they call that? Loaded chips? Loaded uh, with the chips and the cheese. Chips and cheese? Yeah. Like at Taco Bell? What do you call that? When you get the chips with the cheese melted Oh, on nachos. It. I bet. <laughs> you couldn't remember what nachos were. I was thinking of the extreme nachos and how lame, how lame that marketing is. Extreme. <clears throat> Come, can anyone explain to me what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, what is going what on? What the fuck is going on? Why are all chips extreme? Why does everything have to be extreme? Can I just eat my chips and not it's like the, have a... The, the, religious experience the gatorade thing ultimate hydration it's the same thing just yeah. shut the fuck up give me my drink and my shut chips up. and let me eat in peace yeah just let me eat in peace i don't i don't need my chips to be extreme okay i'm just trying to like i mean if i jump out of a second story window and land on my feet and everything's fine that's extreme okay right i the food that i put in my mouth doesn't have to be extreme i'm gonna say that I'm bringing, bringing back Baywatch because it's been a while. Okay. But, and watching those episodes from the early 90s, I feel like there was a direction that marketing took where it started becoming more extreme because it was like, oh, like, you know, like taking advantage of like this, I don't know, this this youth thing where it's like yeah. you're, you're eating extreme chips because you're young and you're like, you can do dangerous stuff because that's like what you do when you're young. You're young and you're invisible and you're extreme and your but food's extreme and the clothes you wear are extreme. But you're 45 and you're fat and you're watching soap operas. Yeah, at and you're PM. still wearing Jinkos for some fucking reason. And you're eating you know? extreme Doritos with MSG in it because you think you're cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a, I eat this because it keeps me extreme. <laughs> and you've got a Skid Row t-shirt on. Like, hey, you're not that cool, man. Look, look, dude. Look, you, you actually need to go work out and like move your body around a little bit. You're like you're you, you don't ever do anything. You need to move around a little bit if you want to be extreme. Humans okay? were made to move around. Yeah. Not to sit in a lazy boy eating Doritos. Like don't listen to the government. The government's going to tell you to eat more chips. The government's going to tell you to eat more chips. They're going to tell you that sitting in your basement and eating chips is extreme, okay? Don't it's, listen to yeah. them. It's safe if you do that. It's safe. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing extreme about it, though. Okay. There's nothing extreme about being safe. Yeah. Not nothing. <sighs> nothing. You idiot. God. Moron. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? What's going on what here? What the fuck is going on? I there, don't know. There you have it. I, yeah. don't, I. I mean, I think that. I think we kind of figured it out in a haphazard way there. Yeah, I think we did. I think we figured out most things at this point, but I think there's going to be more things that we have to figure out, and it's just never going to stop. It seems like every time we do an episode, we solve like a lot of major humanity yeah. issues, and then there's like more the next week. And very simple solutions, too. I feel like I, everybody that listens to if you listen to this podcast, your life is probably better than most people's because you're listening to us, and we're great. Right. And, and I just, before we go here, I just got to give you guys a reminder uh, listen to the two honks podcast for 24 hours tag us in the updates you post on instagram just listen to us for an entire day and then write us a positive review that's all yeah if you say anything negative about you uh, uh, about us we're going to sue you right and we have lawyers and stuff so yeah, they're sitting right here actually they're si they said they listen 
They listen to everything we say, okay? Yeah. And you're just doing you're doing it for us because we do enough for you, okay? Yeah, we're getting a little tired here. We've done so. we've done a lot for you guys. Yeah. So now we need you to listen to us for an entire day and tell us how great we are. Yeah, and send us some money. Yeah, and send we, us some money. We if don't want to like harp on about it, but like we've only gotten like 500,000 yeah. since the last episode and that's that's Cutting it close That's for us. Not enough money. We can barely pay the bills on that. So send us some cash. I mean, once you create a lifestyle, you gotta, you know, kind of maintain it. Yeah, we're right? kind of a big operation here yeah, now. It's, it's getting big. It's getting real big. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? But anyway. Hey, yeah. Yeah.